hello hello and welcome back to Brit reviews they all so today i'm going to be talking about the um, series that is on the uh, peacock um app so for um this show it is called one of us is lying i binged watch season one because I, I started watching it the free episodes and then it cut off i never went back finally got access so i'm caught up season two has um the entire season two is up and rolling so i am going to be watching and doing the reviews on the episodes as i watch them so far i've only watched episode one they already started off exactly where it left off so in the end the murder club i'm gonna call them that they um pretty much went their separate ways after what happened with jake um they basically covered up his murder so they all went back to trying to just not be associated with each other and just going about their lives they all get a text message saying the same thing um basically they are getting blackmailed blackmail for five thousand dollars i believe yeah five thousand dollars blackmail for five thousand dollars pretty much whoever this simon says is they're pretty much saying that they saw what they did in the woods that night and um they better do whatever simon says so yeah so they all met up um even though they hadn't been really keeping up with each other they all met went outside the cafeteria and talked and um so basically they're supposed to meet up with the five thousand dollars for later that night but they all was pretty much like no nothing happened we're gonna stick with our story we're not showing up we're not going okay so that was a done deal for that now the entire time ever since everything's been going on um with simon being murdered and then now jake just the disappearance of jake vanessa she's such a butthole but she has been on they butt okay this entire time and now with jake the story with jake is that he left and he fled and went to mexico and no one can find him and they can't get in touch with him or nothing um so it's the story vanessa is not believing it so she's just like no like on her social media you know talking to her followers basically she's trying to figure out what happened to what really really happened to jake and what did they have to do with it um so addy which is the person who was actually dating jake and they were like in a real relationship got rocky so on and so forth they tried to make it work in the end it didn't work out so addy at this point she's doing her best to try to keep her head on the outside but on the inside homegirl is losing it okay she is not okay but she keeps telling herself she's okay she is not okay and it is very obvious so obvious um but we gonna put a pin on her for just a second now moving on we have nate he um he has all the charges have been dropped so you know so that's wonderful nate goes home his mom there's bottles of beer there's champagne um his mom they are in there getting lit the dad what his, his dad was not there when he got home and she's like yeah we're celebrating for you your dad he went out to go get some drinks let's have a drink and nate is just like dude like you're supposed to be here you're supposed to be helping my dad get sober but you're coming in and you're making the situation worse you can go now at this point it's just how you feel like you can go like we gonna be good like go back to where you came from because you're not helping the scenario at this point she's like we're gonna i'm I'm not leaving you you know i want to make this work and it's just like that's not gonna be good i mean at this and nate is still upset because his mom actually in season one tried to get him to um plead guilty and take a plea deal uh, for four years um i believe he was gonna get four years for the murder of simon which we all know nate did not do um so he's pretty much still upset with her about that you know and he's just like you didn't even believe like you really thought that i did that i did do something to this guy but she refused to leave at the end of the day nate is like okay well i'm out we're gonna i'm interested to see like where he's gonna end up staying if he's telling his mom that he's not coming back to the house to be there with her and his dad i mean i i get it um let's see brown one her sister she's doing some sneaky stuff again 
she was um actually kind of it was like something with her and Vanessa in the cafeteria that day and I'm a little I'm wondering like okay girl like are you dipping and dabbling and you like causing some issues again with whatever happened with Jake are you gonna be messing with them again she said in the beginning in season one that she wasn't actually doing anything she was actually trying to help her sister but I don't know we gonna have to see we, we gonna have to see um now brown one being the hard-headed person that she is even though they all agreed the murder club they agreed we are not gonna go to even say even go show it with no five thousand dollars at this location we're not doing that because we're gonna stick with the, what we said we did not do anything we don't know anything she goes on her own leaves the bag of course it's a fake bag with it's a bag with fake money in it it's not real and so she's watching she's on the lookout first of all the location where you parked that was questionable because you literally were just like right there so if somebody was watching you they saw you when you pulled up went up there put the bag down and then went back to your vehicle so you were seen that's the first thing second thing i'm wondering she's so into trying to watch the bag she didn't realize that nate was actually walking up to her car so he goes and he just knew in his heart like Brownlin, she's gonna go she's gonna go up there you know she said she wasn't i know how she her mind thinks and he was right now the two of them they in the car they bickering back and forth they didn't even realize that whoever it is that's blackmailing them went to the bag and opened it and realized that it was paper in there and then of course they get the text message and it said big mistake and it disappears just like all the other messages um, whoever this person is they are a genius with technology and I'm really really wondering y'all is Simon really dead I'm just saying I don't know I'm, I'm just really wondering but anyway um yeah that was just it was like the whole thing was for nothing at this point she didn't even get to see whoever walked up now after this happens the next day Addie gets a, a gift at her door her mom brings this to her thinking she has like some secret admirer or something like that mind you there's a name Cole that keeps popping up on her phone and she's not answering it and responding to it at all I don't um I, I'll put a pin on that in a, and we'll come back to it but Eddie gets the thing she opens it up she immediately closes it and she's like oh it must be a prank you know people they still believe in such and such and such with Jake but I know that it probably was from the person saying uh, that they are Simon. Now, lo and behold, she opens it and guess what's in it? The freaking gun. It looks exactly like the gun that was used to murder Jake. I don't know if that is the actual gun or if someone went out and purchased one similar and they're using that to scare them into doing what they want them to do. So we're gonna have to find out. Now, this girl, she hurries up and goes to school that day she now she wants to talk to Janae because she's actually trying not to really talk to anybody really she tells Janae that what happened and that she has the gun and she was like oh okay well, where's the gun she's like I brought it with me and she's like you idiot like you brought a gun to school like are you serious what were you thinking Janae's like give it to me I'm gonna get rid of it don't worry about it now Janae goes off to the pier and she takes the gun out of the box or whatever and first of all i'm like why would you do that because if anybody saw you they saw you pull a gun out of a box right okay i'm thinking girl throw the whole box in the freaking water and leave it alone all right no you know what she did she got to reminiscing about some things and now she kept it um i think that she's keeping the gun as a security deposit in case anything don't go right and they try to play her she's gonna have that murder weapon that's what i think all right now with that being said um addie sends a message to cooper and they all want she said um no she actually sent it to nate they wanted to meet up so they all met at some I don't know some little area I guess that's where the people smoke the drugs or whatever on the campus anyway but they all meet up now first of all she tells them what happened Janae lies and says that she got rid of the gun we all know she didn't you have Brown she didn't tell 
the people the them that she actually was the was the reason why they got that text message that's their big mistake she didn't tell them that she actually did show up with a fake with a bag with fake with paper in it to try to catch whoever it was that was whacking on him so of course nate he did not say anything but then he definitely addressed her at that point my opinion nate you should have called her out on it immediately when y'all are meeting together you keep y'all are all keeping secrets and that's not that's not what's up um now let's see moving forward we're gonna jump forward um Brown. she had her interview in like right before they her and nate they were bickering back and forth like her mind's thinking about now she's thinking about all this stuff that's my dog y'all so the other thing about it, she's thinking about all this stuff she goes into the interview she's talking does excellent on the interview and then they get to the last question i i bet it was the last question about how did she keep up with her grades and keep you know her head straight while trying while dealing with all the stuff that was going on with the um the the murder or death of simon and home girl completely lost it the lady was like what's your secret and she just lost it i'm like if you would have kept up a cool kept your cool i think you would have been fine but she just lost it and didn't want to blame it on nate no ma'am that was all you honey all you anyway now they all get a message saying for them to meet at and it's an abandoned cinema that was creepy but of course they all showed up okay um they're gonna go all of them are gonna go and it's by simon says that's what I'm gonna say going through the series. Um, they also, in the midst of that, they asked for Cooper to go and speak with Chris. With that conversation that happened, I'm assuming that Chris actually knows by way of Cooper what happened that Halloween night, and so something with whatever happened with that, the both of them they are no longer together, so that's brand new, new that's new news to me. Um, but he did see Chris kissing a guy. So he immediately felt some type of way when he saw it. But now I know what it is. It's like Cooper wasn't ready to let it go. But Chris was just like, look, after everything that happened, it was a necessity at this point. I can't. And he's like, I just need you to quit messaging me, quit asking me questions because you keep making me think about what happened that night and why we're not together. I do not want to keep thinking about that. I want to move on. You need to move on. So that was that. Now, um... Addie, she goes home. Her mom let up uh, uh, Cooper's ex-girlfriend. I forget her name. I think it's like Kale or something like that. But anyway, Addie's mom let her upstairs uh, to speak to Addie when she got home. Now, mind you, homegirl was sitting going through Addie's like drawings that she had been doing. And I'm like, the way that those drawings looked, it looked like she was basically expressing what happened that night. And that was probably not good um that they, that she saw that now Addie all in her head like I said at this point Addie's losing it she's trying to keep it together but she's doing terrible at doing, at doing that um in conversation with Kale I'll just call her Kale I'll have to, to find out her name and get it right but in conversation with her she is just saying like okay look you you shouldn't speak ill you know people you know you shouldn't talk about jake like that and the girl is like the only time people say you shouldn't speak ill of someone is when you're talking about speaking ill of the dead and now it's just like addy god shut your mouth because you literally just sent off a red flag everybody already is suspecting that y'all know something more than what you do about what happened to jake in that combo did not help so i think addie messed up so we are going to see what happens with that now um Brown, of course at some point she was going to get caught by the sister sneaking out of the house um and of course the sister lies to her because she doesn't try to keep her out of it as usual but she lies and says she's going to go meet up with Nate. Technically, yes, but not really because the Burn Club is headed to meet up at the cinema. Now, they all get there. They go in. Mind you, I believe this is where they used to meet in season one to have that little meeting. So they go there. It's like seats reserved for them. And that was creepy. 
And secondly, a whole thing comes on and it's like Simon and it's like it's like the, the video is edited in a way to almost make it seem like it's Simon speaking to them directly. Um, and then they see the clip of them in the woods with Jake's body. Not good. So this is bad because now we know whoever this person is has their information. They know what happened. They really know and they're not lying. Now. Once they get a message, it was something they realized that, okay, whoever it is, they're here and they can hear what we're saying. And so they take off, they head to the projection room, two head to the projection room, the others go, they go their ways to try to catch whoever it is that's in there. Janae, she starts looking under the seats and she finds a bug, um, Mike. So that is how whoever it was is listening to the conversation. Now, as um, I believe it was Brown and Nate who was up in the yeah it was them they were up in the projector room the thing was rigged to literally set on fire so it went off everything's going up in flames so they have to beeline it out of there so they don't get caught up and I'm a little bit nervous that if there were any cameras or if there was anyone else around that saw them going in there or coming out that's not gonna be a good look because y'all fled the scene from a place that was set on fire after you entered it and you weren't supposed to be in there. But now, um, Addie, after all of that has happened, Addie, she's headed home. Um, a little, I think it's a little bit weird that she is riding home on a bike by herself at night. Clearly it was late. By herself with what's going on. Now, the person that has been watching her, because we saw a clip of someone watching her before, but we couldn't see their face or th their full body, this time... Cole walks up behind her and she literally freaks out. This guy, of course, he's he's not, he, you know, his mind is, you know something more about what happened to my brother and you're not telling me, you're avoiding me, you know, so he pull, he rolls up on her before she goes into her house. Um, and, and that's how I was like, oh, this is brother, got it, got it. I'm going to keep that in mind because he said he's not letting up on this, so it's going to be something more with him. Um... I really feel like Addie might probably um, think that Cole might have something to do with who's blackmailing him, but we will find out, of course. Um, now we get some flashbacks. We've been get we got flashbacks from what happened through the scene through that night with what happened with Jake, and it turns out I never knew who actually pulled the trigger, but it turned out that it was Addie who pulled the trigger on the gun, and she's the one who shot Jake. Um, so. That literally helps to explain why she is literally really, 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 really mentally not doing well. Um, so we will find out. I mean, that's pretty much what it was for episode one. I'm going to go on to episode two so we can keep this thing going. I think it's about eight episodes. I love this freaking show and I would highly suggest it for people who are into these sort of things. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you for joining me and um, I hope you like and um, you have any questions let me know comment I'll respond thank you for watching uh, please like comment and subscribe and I will be back with more videos bye y'all